Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 23B. This is the second of three tutorials focused on accounting for intangible assets. Tutorial 23A focused on recognition of internally generated intangible assets, whereas this tutorial will review accounting for impairment of intangible assets under ASPE. The next tutorial, 23C, will review accounting for impairment of intangible assets under IFRS. This tutorial is based on the application of the cost recovery impairment model to intangible assets under ASPE. And it does not matter whether or not the intangible asset is internally generated or purchased, the application of the model is the same for both. Thus, there are three main learning objectives for this tutorial. The first is to apply the ASPE recoverability test to determine if impairment of intangible assets is present. Second, to calculate impairment of intangible assets under ASPE. And third, to record impairment of intangible assets under ASPE. This tutorial is based on the Romulus Pharmaceuticals Inc. B example. So please make sure you download the correct file which contains the data and requirements for this particular problem and review it in advance. Now the Romulus example used in this tutorial is an extension of the example used for tutorial 23A which was based on the recognition of internally generated intangible assets. However, the approach demonstrated in this tutorial is applicable to both internally generated or purchased intangible assets. So even though the Romulus pharmaceutical example emphasizes impairment of internally generated intangible assets, it wouldn't matter if the assets were, were purchased instead. So requirement one of this problem requires us to assume that Romulus reports under ASPE and that we prepare the entry to record any impairment or recovery at December 31st, 2021. So as we did with ASPE in impairment of property, plant and equipment, we start here with conducting an ASPE recoverability test. And that is determined by comparing the carrying value of the asset to the undiscounted future cash flows. And so what we have here is annual undiscounted future cash flows as given in the problem of 67,000 per year. Now, because at 2021. There are nine years remaining. The total undiscounted future cash flows then are simply 67,000 times nine years to give us $603,000. So those are the total undiscounted future cash flows. We then compare that to the carrying value, which is 692,100. And this is calculated as 769,000 capitalized. This is provided in the problem and is also carry forward from the previous tutorial 23A, which focused on our recognition of the, the patent. And so that's where this answer comes from. There is zero salvage value and the patent originally had 10 years. That was at the end of 2020. So now we're at the end of 2021 and there are nine years remaining. So if we take the capitalized amount and multiply by nine over 10 years, which is the number of years remaining, this gives us a carrying value of 692,100. Then the real meat of the test is to compare the carrying value to the undiscounted cash flows. If the carrying value is greater than the undiscounted future cash flows, which we have here, we have impairment. So basically, if the carrying value is greater than the UCF, which is the case, then the asset is impaired. Once we have determined that impairment is evident, we proceed to step two, and that is basically to calculate the impairment under ASPE. How we do that is comparing or just take the fair value uh, less the carrying value. And it's important to note that the fair value under ASPE excludes any costs to sell. IFRS includes disposal costs or costs to sell, but ASPE excludes them. So we have a fair value as given in the problem, excluding cost to sell of $650,000. Then we subtract the carrying value of $692,100. And this results in impairment of $42,100. The last piece is just simply to record that. So we will debit loss on impairment of 42,100 and credit accumulated impairment losses for the patent of $42,100. Then what we can do is show what this would look like on the balance sheet. So we have our patent uh, net. So with the original cost of $769,000 and that was spread over 10 years, giving us one year's amortization, 76,900, that's uh, how we arrived at an ending balance of 692,100, which is actually the same as this times nine over 10. So that uh, resolves our 
previous calculation. Then after the journal entry, we have a new account, accumulated impairment losses here for the patent, with a balance of $42,100. And then this translates into a balance sheet if we want to see what it would look like. So, uh, of course, under non-current assets, we have intangible assets, the patent, shown at a uh, net value of accumulated amortization of 692100 Then the accumulated impairment losses patent account is uh, deducted from there to give us a net carrying value, which is the fair value, as we determined, of $650,000. So now we can proceed to requirement 1B, which is basically to go through the same process again and record any uh, impairment or recovery at December 31st, 2022. However, the trick is going to be that in actual fact, there cannot be a recovery under ASPE and we'll get to that later on. So we go back to our recoverability test, again, the carrying value versus the undiscounted future cash flows. In 2022, we're told that things change. The drug is more successful, and therefore the undiscounted future cash flows are now determined to be $125,000. That results in total undiscounted future cash flows of a million dollars, and that's $125,000 annual times eight years. The carrying value of our asset goes back to, from our original cost of $769,000 minus the 76,900 2021 in amortization, then we would take our impairment to give us a value of $650,000. And if we multiply that by eight over nine, which is the number of years remaining, that determines that the carrying value of the patent should now be $577,778. Then we ask the question, is the carrying value greater than the undiscounted future cash flow? And in our case here, it is not. And as such, impairment does not exist in this situation. Since the carrying value is less than the uh, undiscounted future cash flows, we do not have impairment. And a question that we might ask is, well, can we recover the previous impairment losses, but recoveries are not permissible under ASPE, so we cannot recover. So basically, we do not proceed to step two. There is no calculation of impairment, and there's no calculation of any recovery under ASPE. Then we can just show now how this looks like on our balance sheet. If we look at our patent account, again, starting from our original cost of 769000 we had the amortization in 2021, giving us a balance at the end of 2021 of 692100 And then the amortization in 2022 can simply be calculated as the $650,000 full carrying value, that's the patent amount less, right? So that's 650,000 is 692,100 minus the 42,100 accumulated impairment uh, balance. And that's divided by nine years will give us 72,222. So the balance at the end of 2022 is 619,878. Our accumulated impairment losses for the patent, there's no change. So the balance is still the same. And we can see how this translates into our balance sheet. Again, non-current assets, intangible assets. The patent now at a net of 619,878. And the accumulated impairment losses of 42,100, giving us a net carrying value of 577,778, which is what we had determined previously. And now for some key points to remember. First, Intangible assets, whether internally generated or purchased, are subject to the cost recovery impairment model under ASPE. In this case, if the carrying value of the assets is greater than the undiscounted future cash flows, then the asset is impaired. And we can calculate the impairment loss as the carrying value less the fair value and we do not include disposal costs. So carrying value minus the fair value will give us the impairment amount. Finally, recoveries of previous impairment losses are not permissible under ASPE. This concludes tutorial 23B. You should now proceed to tutorial 23C, which will review accounting for impairment of intangible assets under IFRS.